Welcome back to Lit vs. Genre, everybody. And Jeff, we are at episode five. It's already we, more than halfway through, yes. which feels sort of crazy, especially after this last episode. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll wait to, <laughs> to get into that. Um, any initial big reactions? Well, okay. So I'm going to say this. I feel like I've been mostly the defender of the show for most of yeah. our our yeah. you know our episodes i i've you know had criticisms my own sure. criticisms this episode what left me cold left me cold as hell like i this was my least favorite episode of all of them and i'm mm -hmm. curious about what your reaction was if you had a similar reaction and whether at all we have the same reasons for our reactions because <laughs> yeah no that, that is a good question so for me i definitely I, I think i have a sense as to why you're you're saying that i definitely did not like it nearly as much as the last episode um i don't think i i liked it the least but i could see why someone would um and that's because just the first episode for me was so just crazy and emotional and just what are what are they they're doing what what's this oh my what like it was just like shell shock left and right so nothing will ever be as traumatic for me uh, <laughs> as, as that first episode was i would say this one is more i don't want to use the word boring because there's a lot of good performances um but it just doesn't feel like it really i'll use goes the word anywhere. boring i'll use the word yeah boring. exactly i was bored there, there you go I have there, to there you go. So, and I'm interested. Well, yeah. I guess we'll take our take the plot lines in order again. Sure, um, sure. My big plot line I want to talk about is step in. So maybe we should save that. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm yeah. really interested in a story level to talk about that because I have seen some people's yeah. reactions being very positive to that storyline. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to kind of dig in why I think oh, it's yeah. so boring. <laughs> but, well, and this is where like so this is. You know, for those who are unfamiliar with our, our show, the lit versus genre show, um, we're mainly here to talk about writing. <laughs> I guess we're both we're both writers. We're going to talk about writing, whether that's writing for a book or for a screenplay. Um, and so I think there's some fascinating things to discuss from a writing standpoint, story choices that they made uh, with this episode. So I am completely with you. But yes, I say let's save it because that's kind of the big one to talk about. Um, uh, I, I think it's easiest to talk about Egwene and uh, Perrin first, just because uh, Matt and Rand sort of intersects and gets consumed by mm. the other storyline to a okay. degree, you know? Okay. Um, I mean, there's probably more to say about Egwene and Perrin, but th that was just my take yeah. cool with you. Yeah, let's do All it. Right. So what were do you, would you like to kick off or? No, I feel so, like I'm always kicking off. You, you kick off, okay. I will respond. Happy to, happy to. So as we've already said before, um, I'm very much enjoying the actor who's playing Valda. Um, he's got, you know, this this presence of gravitas. We sort of knew this was going to happen again, especially uh, trailers are a fascinating. I'm not trailers um, uh, where they remind you of what's happened previously. Ah, yeah, I, right. I felt like books need this, especially with uh, for those who do like reading on online platforms, like something like Royal Road. It really lets you do this. You could actually put a preview in front of a chapter. And I think it, it serves an important point because it's the writers telling you, hey, these are the points that are important to know for what you're about to watch. So right. it's like you're totally getting spoilers, you know, because you get that shot of Valda being like, I'll remember your faces. And then so, of course, you know. When, oh, it would have been good to remind. Maybe I have to watch those. Yeah. I got to be honest. I hit the Insta skip on uh, Amazon yeah. on those. I often do myself. Yeah, I often do too, but I, I happen to catch the beginning of it. I don't know. Sometimes, you know, if it's a weekly show, Part of me wants to get of as much of it as I can, right? So I'll like I'll watch the previous or I'll watch even the intro again, just because it's like my one time that week seeing it. So wrong. After a while, I, I definitely do skip as well. But I do. I so, do remember how yeah. uh, on Lost, you would always mm. know whose character they would be right. focusing on that week mm -hmm. because of the previous, because they'd have to go back like seasons on those. Right. They'd be like, <laughs> let me tell you about this person, <laughs> right? But it, it, it's a it's a good technique. It allows them to do things that books have trouble doing because in a book you could just get lost, right? Mm -hmm. Like in a book, they have to do some other way of the previously on that maybe feels I don't know oh, not Lord. not as streamlined. In you know, comics, it feels like wait for yeah. like a long time oh, yeah, in Marvel, like there was a mm -hmm. rule that 
for any Marvel comic, the editor, I guess it was Jim Shooter, had this dictate that it's everybody's first comic. Every comic is somebody's first mm. comic. So you right. need to let them know all of just the... Mm -hmm ridiculous core facts about the character like you would have to mention that yeah. peter parker got bit by a radioactive spec every single oh, issue that's so annoying. and it's that's like so really annoying. infamous for like a whole <gasps> era a era oh. where like chris claremont yeah. has to tell you who wolverine is every single episode of, or every single issue i think you could call that an error i, I <laughs> yeah. think that's a, i mean don't get wrong like i I do understand the the reasoning behind it. And this is actually another thing that's talked about with books. Um, when you get these longer series, right? Like something like Wheel of Time, where you're looking at you know, like 13, 14, 15 books, you know, um, depending if you're including the prequel or not. Um, but when it comes to uh, a book series like that, there's some arguments for previously writers for book two or book three or book four would spend the first couple chapters acting like it was reader's first book, oh, right? Like introducing you to these characters right. again. Like I'm, we started reading um, The Great Hunt, which is book two of Wheel of Time, just because I figured in this season, they're going to be getting into it, right? When mm. we've got stuff to talk about there, depending like because of where this episode went. So it's been a thing about like, oh, the next book reintroduces you to characters. And yeah, I just went through this whole description of like who Moraine is, what she looks like, her size, like all these things as That's if it's so your first funny. time reading it. Right? Am... Because it could be you could go to a bookstore and the only book they've got yeah. is book two. It's you know, really happens. it's really interesting. I I haven't really read novels in serialized fashion mm -hmm. um the same way i've always read comic books so it's funny to hear like that same kind of yeah. idea and that same yeah. kind of clunky solution to that idea so it happened at the beginning but these days now that you can just order whatever book you want right i mean it's you know don't get me wrong i love bookstores i love going there but yeah sometimes it's only got book three or book five and you're like i need book one so now that people can kind of order whichever one they want i feel like it's not happening quite as much and now that there are all these wikis for books uh, you know, it's like you can just go look up what happened in the previous book before you start the next one. So I feel like people aren't spending as much time on those intros or what we're seeing some authors do, which I think is really fun, is they'll just put a little summary at the beginning of their book. And I've mm -hmm. seen a lot of readers really like that because yeah. instead of needing to go and find wherever the wiki is or instead of needing this sort of like awkward reintroduction to a character, you've basically got a previously on mm. you've got your you know here's what's happened here are the characters here's what's taken place and like you know a page or two breakdown maybe longer depending on the size of the book and then the book just starts like a regular book so books are doing this some um but they're only doing it at the beginning of a book which doesn't address what could happen when you're writing you know an epic fantasy it's like 600 pages and you're halfway through there's none of this i'm bringing back a character i haven't seen in a while mm. and here's a previous one that a show can do so i do wonder um as we're now seeing you know more publications online and that functionality existing how that'll all go but anyway so like, can <laughs> to, i say to one more thing about this and i know oh, this please. is like not at all about the show and i was not anticipating talking I, about this I know, but right? always my favorite experiences reading a comic would be when mm. I would open up some way, somewhere halfway in a huge long mm. run and have no idea what was happening. Mm. I mean, this is really mm. kind of mm. my initial yeah. as a kid experience reading comics because I was just right. borrowing comics from the uh, these other guys in mm. my Boy Scout troop that I was like, you right. know, getting the comics from and reading crisis starting at like issue five yeah. or something and be and like that makes no sense like no if you try to pick up crisis on infinite what earths halfway <laughs> through you are gonna have no freaking clue what's yeah. happening there's thousands of characters there's like it's crazy and i and now i like crave that i kind of miss that going i don't know what the heck is going on and i gotta mm -hmm. figure it out right well Pardon me. You sound like a fantasy reader, Steve. <laughs> Wanting to, to figure out what various Maybe roles turns out. I'm, I'm gonna, looking for that yeah, book, Jeff. That's gonna make me one. I don't. I don't there's know if gonna I be one. Yet. There's gonna be one. We're gonna we're gonna find it. We're gonna find it. And many would argue that I did you a complete disservice by having you start with Wheel of Time. But here, no, there. Um, to just to quickly quickly talk about that, I think this is why the advice of throw out your first chapter, or first couple chapters. Mm really works because yeah you you think oh i've got to do this setup and sure for certain stories you do and it can be done well 
but also people kind of enjoy just being tossed in the mix, just being tossed into someone living their life, doing their thing, whatever that is, and having to figure out what the heck is going on. And I'm with you. I, I love that feeling of where am I? What's happening? It's why I love fantasy reading. So yeah, completely. completely. <laughs> All right. So you knew so, that uh, we knew White Cloak Valdo, guy was uh, Valdo, right? Is coming. Right. Exactly. We, we knew coming on and people will correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure this is right. I, I need to start like making even more like specific notes, but I do want to give shout outs to everyone that's been correcting me about things like um, the little thing about uh, Nynaeve and it actually being a Manetherin quote as opposed to a Malkir quote. They got so you. awesome. Thank you. Everybody keep <laughs> doing this. By Call the me way. Up. Awesome. Right, trying to ahead. become a more professional uh, YouTuber. Mm -hmm. Please, when you correct Jeff, also click on that subscribe button like every time you've already <laughs> oh, right, subscribed right. every time you correct jeff click subscribe every time us. thanks should i be making more errors <laughs> no but i'm sure i do plenty without meaning to but i was gonna say so we, we know vald is likely coming um for me i enjoyed seeing the uh you know i mean i suppose it's something we've seen before but to see it in a fantasy setting i hadn't i haven't seen this sort of pacifist in a fantasy setting on TV, hmm. linking arms to like stop the white cloaks from getting to the kids, right? So I I, I enjoyed that um, and seeing, you know, them living what they, you know, espouse. I thought that was cool. Um, I also enjoyed, you know, Valda's little speech about what he's there to do and kind of giving them the impossible choice, if you will. I thought that was all, you know, fine. Um, I will say, though, that in the books, there was a much more specific reason uh, why those two were caught as opposed to I just saw you twice and I'm a super suspicious dude, and I just kind of murder people. Um, so, you know, they're definitely going a little bit dark with that. Now, admittedly, that wasn't the person that they met initially in the books. So this person is a darker person, so that's okay. But it, it was kind of a little bit of an oddity to me. So that'll be the first one I'll kind of stop at. What, what was that like for you in terms of, you know, the way he was treating them with little reason? Uh, I, I mean... Yeah, him grabbing them seemed kind of random when he didn't have much reason to suspect mm. anything. Um, much less than he, he seems very confident that Egwene can touch the one power yeah. later and I wasn't quite sure why. All of that is pretty minor to me. You know, I don't really care about yeah. plot holes that much. I, my, I'm waiting for the reveal moment. <laughs> my issue... <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm not sure what you. No, mean. no, good, good. But my oh, issue well, the, was the reveal in their arc. But no, go ahead. Oh go yeah. Ahead. Um, my issue with this is that he, I have loved his previous two appearances. I guess it was kind of one main episode where he appears twice. Um, mm. I mm. thought I yeah. did not love him this time. I and maybe it's because of the comparison to the book. One of the only parts of the book <laughs> that I actually liked was oh, Bornhold so in the book, in the book oh, and being such like oh, a so great good. great antagonist because he's complicated in an right. interesting way that you could see his point of view, but he's also threatening at yeah. the same time in his scariness yeah. and. I saw somebody else kind of mention that uh, Valda's line about everybody is special under the light or whatever he says. And you kind of get like that same sort of flavor yeah. from that. But I just felt like he was much more mustache twirling villain yes. in this. And like the mm -hmm. that, that whole setup of, oh, I'm either killing him or I'm killing you. You decide. That sounded like Bond villain nonsense to me. And I, I also am not really that into like torture porn kind of mm. setups like i'm just it's just yeah. feels cliche to me it feels done it feels like mm. okay i already watched whatever it was like six seasons of 24 i don't need to see any more torture <laughs> porn i'm good like so it right. just it really yeah that kind of left me cold and i was pretty disappointed in that because mm. i i like that actor mm. a lot i like his performance a lot yeah. but i just didn't think they wrote a very interesting villain there I feel the writing on this episode overall was a lot weaker than mm -hmm. than the last one. Again, for me personally, of course. Uh, but I think this is an example of that. Yeah, that they sort of stripped away some of his complexity, made it sort of... I'm not going to go as far as to say one note, but I definitely feel exactly what you're saying. And I think part of that is because there's not, he doesn't have a legit reason uh, for mm -hmm. what he's doing, whereas mm -hmm. in the books, totally did. And I don't think there's going to be a spoiler because... I can't imagine they're going to go back and do it. Oh, I mean, 
I guess I won't say it in case someone hasn't gotten to read the book for a first time, because I know this show is bringing in a lot of book readers, which is so cool to me. I love that. Um, and I'll just say that it's different in the books. It's a different character that we're meeting from the right cloaks who has more complexity, who Steve and I both love. Um, and he's got a reason for why he's treating these two the way that he is. Um, and another thing that happens and that I think is kind of a through line in this episode is this episode felt very small to me. Um, and by that, I mean that the the world didn't feel large. We didn't get to feel this uh, sense of a large Tarvalon white tower. We didn't get the sense of uh, complexity within the white cloaks. One of the cool things in the white cloaks that we see in book one is you have Bornhold, which just for the record, so everyone realized the character that we're talking about this in the show is involved, a different character. So Bornhold, and then another character who showed different, not Valda, who showed different viewpoints about what it means to follow the light. So you're getting to see complexity within Children of the Light and different ways of interpreting that uh, belief system, if you will. And here there's been just such a focus on Valda. Like we had mm. the other guy who was like kind of nice to Moraine in the previous interaction. Um, but here it's just all Valda. So it's all just that one note, that one type of belief. And so it, it again robs complexity of the White Cloaks as a, as a group overall too. So. Yeah, true. They kind of good cop, bad cop it a little bit in the book. And you know, exactly. you don't have that same time. Right? Yeah, not here. So then a transition, the reveal. I, I figured you were going to want to talk about this reveal, the reveal of Perrin being like, you know, I killed my wife uh, to uh, to Egwene. Um, yeah. <laughs> did, did you, did I mean, I don't, have it, I don't really have any thoughts about it. I, I think it's fine. You know, I, I right. And I, I kind of do like it I felt it like better. maybe the reveal twist or something. I do like it better that it's out instead of this just being this kind of secret thing yes. like the whole time. Mm -hmm. So I that I find a positive. I mean, I didn't have strong feelings, but like, yeah, let, let's have the other characters know this. Like, why not? I'm, I'm definitely glad that it's, it's at least out mm -hmm. for sure. And I, I will say that there was some motivation for him feeling like, you know, I deserve this. I deserve the torture right. that I'm getting. Again, it's not the story that i wanted told or i would tell if i was doing this recreation of it um i feel like there's other more intriguing ways to go about it but i will say it did at least tie together this mm -hmm. you know feeling of guilt um i will say i'm still annoyed that Egwene never asks him about his you know dead wife like she's just happy you know being with them like there's none of this like hey how are you checking in it's more like what are you talking about now so, i watch you know i watched some old mm -hmm. old parts of old episodes and i think it was referred to a bit more than you gave it credit for you're gonna i'm not gonna uh, pour back over all old episodes i mean i there, went back to episode one there is sure, something no, there's something in two again when because i went back to look at and i think i put in a clip of like moraine riding off on the horse because we were like talking about what she says there and mm. uh, Gwen, i think specifically did refer to it and they did like one of these like cuts to Perrin where he's looking awkward after Egwene talked about you know people who died and he says and she says her name I think um so right. I think she, there was at least uh, another you know reference to it and then again yeah. pacing wise because you have so much to do I think a lot of times in shows and I know other people do this and maybe it's justified, maybe it's not, but you read between the lines a little bit. Obviously they're traveling for a long time. We're not seeing yeah. every minute of their travel along True. this time. And so I don't need tons of references to it to make me feel like, okay, they, they have, you know, at least addressed it with them. I mean, sure, they nodded to her dying. I just feel like they keep being bad friends. Like, they're not checking in on how he is. So this but how just many kind of another check ins are you going to want to watch, man? I don't want to watch well, checking in like well, four or five times about this with them. Complete. Well, I would argue that there was only one actual like check in of like, how yeah. are you, parent? Good. Um, uh, and that was Great. from I don't Matt want to. in their conversation. <laughs> I don't well, want to. I, I, it, well, well, since it was only, let, let me explain. Since it's only Matt and Perrin doing that, then that means I've only seen Matt care. So I only like Matt. And then I dislike the other characters because they seem to not care about their friend. And this ties to what I think was, it's sort of been the talk more for a while now that 
killing your wife is such a huge thing. Oh my like, god, I don't like, want to talk like, about killing my wife anymore. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not, not going to talk about it anymore, but I'm just saying <laughs> it's such a big thing that there's fallout that needs to be addressed. And I think this is just another issue of like them not addressing this big thing they set up. All right. But again, that's just my take because it's brought up here. That's all. I'm, I'm not looking to get into it. Yeah. Um, so um, for me, I would say that the sort of close out to the scene had two major weaknesses um, that were the parts that I personally liked the least. Um, I very much enjoyed uh, Gwen having like the small little flame yeah. that just like went like fun. poof on his chest. And he's like, oh, child, mm -hmm. you'll need more than that. Or like he, he keeps saying to call him the child. But pointer is, I thought that was cool. But then seeing him completely freak out when Perrin like hulked out mm -hmm. or whatever, like, oh, light, protect me. Uh, I was like, that feels completely out of character mm -hmm. for him. Uh, that felt like, yes, they were going into the total norm mustache trolling trope that I'm only powerful when I have power. And as soon as anyone stands up to me, I crumple mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. a flower. Um, and I was just like, what? Because again, Perrin just stands up and yeah, he's got a little bit of yellow in his eyes, but considering someone just threw a magic fireball at you, um, I mean, granted we could argue, yeah, he's seen them before. He maybe hasn't seen someone with yellow eyes, but I don't know. It, it was just like really weird, really out of character to me. And I was like, what? And All so that very sucked. much took me out of the scene. He just sucked. Yeah, that was, song. it was not enjoyable for me that <laughs> what, what happened with that part. And, and I would agree that that part sucked to me. Uh, and then when they left the camp and with the wolves in that moment, I was like, this should just be animated. <laughs> what I mean by that is like, I would argue that in many cases, we still just don't have the money or tech to do live action uh, fantasy um, and have all the fantastical elements um, that big fantasy has. The reason why something like Game of Thrones worked well uh, was because it's low fantasy. Like there's not a lot of magic um, and they, they pick their moments in terms of like when they showed the dire wolves or when they showed a dragon and it looked really good, but it's not like there was, you know, magic uh, happening left and right. Um, so for this, like, it just looked cheesy to me, like the wolves, the dogs that they had, the shots, like it just didn't, it didn't look compelling. It looked, I don't know. One of the guys like halfway in a tent and being dragged back into the tent, like the wolf ran into the tent and is pulling him back into it. What? Um, it's just shot that way because that's how they can shoot a wolf attacking without actually using a wolf, right? So, uh, you know, I, I don't know what the answer is for something like this other than let's not have a massive <laughs> trial, trial like scene or whatever it is they spent money on. I know we're we're all here still trying to figure out where where did the money for this show go so you could train like packs of dogs, like a whole, like a dozen husky sled teams <laughs> to then be attacking people, something like that. Um, but I just found it, it didn't, it didn't look very good. Um, I'll stop there. I have one last thought with wolves, but anything to add on that? No, I, I mean, I thought it looked fine. I think the thing that looked... There was like one takedown that looked janky. It was like a really like super close up, so you yeah. didn't really see like yeah. a wolf like came out of nowhere, like out of screen left or right. something. <laughs> like took somebody out. <laughs> but I was like, I don't know. It didn't it didn't super bother me. I think you were so disappointed with Vald already. Yes. That part of the story arc couldn't couldn't slip any further down. Um but yeah, I thought it was less than impressive. Um Especially, and here's my final thing, beyond just the looks of it, the fact that we haven't really done anything with Perrin and the wolves. Um, in the books, and I, I do have to just say this, I'm not going to say what all they say, but Perrin gets to speak with wolves in the book. And the way wolves talk is something I love. We, we talked about this when we were reading the book. Like, they have their own society and structures and the way of viewing things. And I get that it's a different medium. I get that it's hard. But like there's ways around stuff like there there's we could have done voices in his head. We could have done cut to imagery, like something to show that he has some sort of connection with these animals that are saving him. If I was a non book reader, I would go, I guess the dude's 
got some wolf stuff going on like because i think that's fine i don't think you need i don't think you need to know more than he's got some wolf stuff going on i mean you know his eyes go yellow you know there are wolves i'm just trying to picture in my mind wolf voiceover right now and it is not working for me like i don't know like be careful what you wish for i don't it could totally work (laughs) totally work no whether it's wolf voiceover or, or like imagery and a sensation i mean this is again the problem with not having elias there without having Eli- elias could have more coached him through or tell him what to expect or be like you hear the rustle of wind in your head that means this like there there's ways to get creative I, I and make is, it work i feel like this is trending more again into there's a change and, and i hate the change or there's a no, character and i hate the character no, what we're getting right all. now you also have disagree you also have seen disagree. future episodes so like you don't know what they are going to I don't do need or, what, to see future or what, episodes. Well, what if there's wolf voiceover in the next episode you work that up doesn't, to it no, you know no, and that i don't doesn't think make this any less weird and weird odd how i didn't strange. think it was weird well like, i mean just weird about wolves, it you know something's going on with wolves. save him yeah you know I he's mean, like a wolf something and you know he's i don't know that this is any more odd than uh, what happens in the book is odd uh, like you I run mean, into wolf man you also happen to be a wolf man good coincidence <laughs> that you ran into wolf man on your way I, in the middle I of nowhere agree. and then you talk I'm to not wo- wolves in your head all of that is very weird <laughs> Whereas okay, this okay. is like, what, what I, I know there's some connection weird. between them, and I imagine I'm going to learn more about what that connection is or how it works. When I when I say weird, I mean like non-compelling from a, a viewing standpoint. I completely am not here to defend the absurd coincidence that I completely agree with that happens in the book. Um, but once that coincidence is out of the way, we at least begin to understand why there's a sense of camaraderie between them. Um, and having that up front then could help us understand why wolves behave the way they do. Um, and we've definitely had this conversation about the book before, about how when they explain something after the fact, then it's kind of like weird. Don't get me wrong. Obviously, that can work. That's happened in plenty of media and books where something strange happens and then we get the explanation. Um, and I hope that they would do at least that. Um, but I'm curious for, for, for anyone out there, maybe, maybe I'm off base as I've been before. I'm just saying, I think as a non-book reader, and I can only, you know, imagine it so much, I would think as a non-book reader, this would all just seem odd. Like, why are these wolves helping them? Why are they weirdly around him? Why has this never happened before? Just, it would be strange. So I'm just curious to hear if anyone knows any non-book readers or is a non-book reader yourself. Um, what have See, you been thinking about the pair and wolf connection? I want to talk all. about it a little bit more because I feel like this yeah, yeah. is like not a reveal issue to me. This feels mm-hmm. like okay. there's no doubt in my mind. I, and again, I have read the first book, but I feel like if I was watching it, there's mm-hmm. no doubt in my mind that this is more of a promise. You're going to learn sure. what okay. the wolf connection yep. is. And I'm fine waiting to find out what the wolf connection is. I don't need it given to me right away yeah i mean promises can can certainly work um i mean we're definitely gonna learn you wouldn't put it into the show if you were just gonna be that's the last time we ever see wolves i would be shocked beyond shocked i mean listen this show has shocked me (laughs) plenty of times already i would not put it past them it's just like or or when they i'm just yeah i do i'm gonna go on records I do not have faith that they're going to explain this uh, in a compelling way. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now it just is feeling like this weird uh, solution that just appears. Um, But um, I I just, I would love a moment with him actually connecting with one, just him looking at one who's growling at him. Who's like, "Ah!" Mm -hmm. and he's like, yeah, that one that looks like crazy. Like it's about to rip my face off. It's not going to hurt us. I think too for me is just the the interactions we've seen so far just haven't worked for me. Like it was super random when it just like walked up in a previous episode and licked his wound and then the way he knows what it's thinking, but it looks completely different. So I think maybe too, if these moments had been handled differently, I would be more on the same page about like, oh yeah, this is like an interesting promise that I'm curious to see delivered on. So I think that's what's also driving it. All right, all right. Let's move on. So that's that arc. I mean, yeah. we will have to talk about Nynaeve's commentary flashed in between with Egwene, but we can do that in, in that part. But overall, okay. I think that covers that arc. 
stuff. Yeah, so let's move on to uh, mm-hmm. Matt and Rand. I, I don't really have much to say about this, but I yeah. my main curiosity is how you feel about lo, 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 Loyal, Loyal, you know, Loyal. Y'all yeah, know. he went Loyal, y'all know. Loyal. Yeah, I go Loyal, I think. Um. So, uh, well, before we get to before we get to that, because I feel there's more to talk about there. I agree. I don't think there's a lot to talk about with the two boys. Um, I do just want to continue to give uh, Matt props. I'm just con- just loving the way he's. I just really enjoy this actor, and I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm just continuing to go down this path because I know we're losing him or something. But I don't because I, I think Stepin, the actor for him, is great as well, and we'll talk all about that. But I, I just I thought there was a lot of nuance, continued nuance in the performance, and I'm Rand is growing on me. Um, I know I was very much like, blech, blech, this actor not even reacting to things in the first episode. Um, but he, uh, w- when it seems like it can be sort of standard boyish charm with some, like, a little bit of worry, I feel like he's got that. <laughs> he's got that. So I, I liked a lot the scene between Kim and Matt up watching Logan come in, Matt seeming to see things maybe that were there, maybe that weren't. Um, and this very sort of one-sided conversation where Matt demands this promise, Rand agrees, and Rand's like, and you'll do that for me, right? And Matt's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and and we had to see sort of that disappointment of Rand. So I just want to give, you know, Rand props where it's due. Um, I feel like he, you know, communicated those parts perfectly fine um, in the scene. I've been liking him more ever since uh, he had that interaction with the dark friend. I feel like that's played more uh, to that actor's strength. So let me say anyway, this. But yeah. I, let me say this. Yeah. I, I know I've heard a lot of mm-hmm. people say online that they they love Matt. And I, I like the actor mm-hmm. as well. I but it's been interesting yeah. to me. I I think all the actors are good, and I haven't really like mm. been like, oh, he's head yeah, and shoulders disagree. above the rest. Well, like who don't you who do you feel like is doing a a bad job acting wise? Everyone I haven't mentioned. <laughs> so no, oh, like the so... from from the first episode. The compelling actors to me were mainly Matt. Um, like I said in that last episode, I feel like we got to see Nynaeve shine with some better writing. The writing for her in that well scene was just like so bad to me. Um, so Nynaeve, I've been enjoying more. Um, Rosamund Pike has moments where I feel like she's doing a great job and then other moments where she's not. Um, Steppen, I really think Steppen's doing a great job. Um, and then the actor for uh, Valda, as we said. Uh, the Well... And then uh, Patton Fane. As I said, he only had a moment, but oh, oh, I feel like that actor just stole it where he came in with that big, you know, grin and everything. Um, and obviously there's a, a little bit of him in this episode. Um, and Logan, Logan, uh, I liked as well. Um, I thought bad? the king did an okay job. Who's bad? Like I said, uh, oh, and everybody Wayne else was better is for me on the half. I think... Everyone else has been middling, has been like, okay. Like, like not really memorable to me. Not really like making me go, oh, wow. Like you're, you know, selling me on this moment. But how much um, is that, is the writing? How much of that is the acting? That's hard to say, right? I you think know, it's easy to I say. Mean, it's the great... writing. I don't think any of the actors well, are bad. I think the actors are all no, good. No, 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 you can only do so no, much with the material no. that you're given. You can't no, elevate no, because it that it's... much. You can, as as an actor, All I completely right. disagree. You can you can absolutely elevate uh, bad dialogue. I have not seen, I don't think, a bad scene with Matt, and that's because even if he's given lines that aren't great, he's got nuance to his performance. There's things that's going on. For me, um, uh, Gwen's been the better half. Gwen has some interesting stuff in the scene, which I'm waiting to talk about until we talk about the naive unbreakable thing. But um, Gwen, I thought was stronger, but Rand to me was super weak. Uh, Lan, it's so hard for me to say for Lan just because they're doing such a weird thing with his character. So that one, I'll, I'll agree, I can't say whether he's good or bad. But, uh, you know, a lot of the sort of side actors are just kind of like, eh, none of them really stood out. Um, but for the mains, yeah, Perrin and Rand side are the two aren't really weak to ones. Stand out. I mean, oh, no, but they can. Pat and Fane. Pat and Fane was in it two, mo- like two minutes. Sure. And that guy killed it. The so, tinker lady uh, you liked, the other tinker like, kid like the, you liked, oh, tinker dad tinker doesn't really get a chance, yeah. doesn't do anything. Tinker I mean, dad's I don't been like meh. I can I, like, right. let me go on record saying I think the mm. acting has been universally solid. I haven't seen anywhere, but and but and I recognize when like I see cheesy acting or bad acting. I know enough to know that, and there hasn't been anything that has thrown me out of the story or just made me think like this is not authentic or anything like that i I just find the like 
complaint well, I mean, about the acting yeah, feels yeah. like misplaced complaint about how the character is written or what I they're being asked to say. I promise you it is not. So, All right. Well, I remain I unconvinced. Agree. So unless you give me some better evidence, I'm not going to be convinced. This, this, is a, this is a personal thing, Steve. You're, not, right. you're just not going to agree with it. Well, that's fine. Um, it, it's just a difference in, I think, training versus acting versus not. Because when you have that, because there's I see. plenty of bad ready. Leave that, it to the experts, agree. Jeff. Leave it to the experts. That, yeah. Well, I will say, plant. well, there's certain things you watch for versus not. Like, before I learned about lighting. Okay, let's let's say this. Let's say this. So before I learned about lighting in theater, I was never really taking the lighting into consideration. It wasn't like, sure, if something was really bad. If I couldn't see something, I'd be like, I can't even see what's happening. What is this? Right. So like, that's what I think happens once you learn more about any subject. And it's not necessarily a good thing. <laughs> like, trust me, I, in many cases, I wish that I wasn't uh, as aware of like acting or acting choices people are making, because then, then I would be much more like that, where I would just notice acting I really like and probably not notice most of the rest. And if someone did a really bad job, then I would notice it, right? Um, and it's the same for writing, as I'm sure you've noticed. Like, as the more writing you do, the more you notice writing choices that people make, because you're more like hyper aware of it. And like I'm saying, that hyper awareness is not necessarily a positive by any trait. And also, too, so much of it is subjective, right? Like, for me, that actor like Rand in the first episode, or Perrin, or Miranda some degrees, or maybe Land, isn't convincing. Um, and that's just my take. Where for someone else, they could watch and be like, I wept. I cried. I thought it was amazing. Someone else might have watched the performance with the Tinker Woman and not shed a tear like I did, right? So obviously there's going to be a huge amount of subjectivity there. And then there are the other factors. What words are they saying? What's the writing? And what's the directing? I feel like I Lan had one of the best acting moments I've seen in this episode. And then the directing slash writing ruined the yeah. aspect, not his fault. Yeah, I thought it was case. super so, awkward. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, part of this conversation, I think we should go on and fight about something else. But part of this sure, conversation, yeah. I, it, I don't like going down these roads of like, everything's subjective. Oh, I, I don't mean completely is, subjective. I think there Not is... Not completely. Yeah, I think there's a, a point where like, if you're going, this is mm -hmm. awful and everybody else or a large majority of people going, mm -hmm. this is good, you should maybe start to question yourself a little bit <laughs> and maybe start to question, okay, oh, am I? Totally. And I don't mean you specifically yeah. with the acting. I just mean like in general. Because oh, yeah. I do see like a lot of people in comments, mm -hmm. in other things that you see online mm -hmm. that they're just so... I, I feel like when you have that, like what we saw in a mm -hmm. past video, that polarization of the two opinions, sure. that if that mm -hmm. doesn't make you question, if that doesn't make you as a five question, maybe five <laughs> isn't exactly right. Or that doesn't right. make you right. question as a one question. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, a lot of people mm -hmm. do say they like this. Maybe I should question my opinion right. on this. If it doesn't make you do that, you are lost, man. Like... Let's oh, be no, real. There's no yeah. way that all these other people are completely off in their thing. And you should probably sure. temper sure. your opinion a little bit. As, as close as we try to get to an objective truth, right? As, as much as we can with arts, I, I completely agree. Um, for the, and, and yeah, that, that's why, you know, in that <laughs> one episode I said, you know, my fan rage would make me make it a one. But in reality, I would put it as like a three-ish, mm -hmm. you know? Or like halfway, two and a half, three, you know, something like that. Um, so no, totally, totally. I, I would say on the acting side of things, there's been lots of complaints uh, about the acting too. Like when I was reading through it, a lot of people, you know, are calling it soap opera style or like, you know, overacted or acted. So like th this is a common complaint. Um, not so much about Rosamund Pike. Rosamund Pike people are really liking. And I do agree that, as I said before, she, she brings a gravitas uh, to... Uh, a lot of her roles. And again, it is it is tough to separate acting, directing, writing, being different. Um, but there, there's just been some moments that I've been more compelled by other actors than her. So I would say that's, in terms of my acting reactions, I think where I've really differed from other people. Um, and I think, uh, but like Matt, for instance, is getting lots of praise, um, that actor. And again, I do wonder how much of that is heightened because we know he's leaving. Are, are we spending a special amount of attention on him because of that fact. So that's why I want to make sure to give Stepan props uh, in this one. 
uh-huh. like I did uh, for the Tinker uh, Lady in the last one, and, and and the Nynaeve actor in the last one. I thought they did a good job. But anyway, um, yeah, no, I, I love talking about this. This is why we're talking about. But I agree. Let's switch to something else. So we were talking about how we didn't really have much to say about Matt and uh, Rand, and then we were transitioning to Lowell. So with Lowell, Lowell, um, I get what they did here, um, which is, and I read somewhere that they realized, you know, they didn't have the budget to do like full crazy CGI or whatever effects for him, uh, and so they wanted to have him in it more, and so they did something more practical, right? And, And I get that. And again, this to me is why... I really think until technology gets to a better place, we should just be animating uh, these things. But with, with that said, with their choice, I like their choice, honestly, um, to yeah. uh, I mean, a, do him that God. way. Thank God he's practical, yeah. in my opinion. Right. And two, yeah. like, I, I liked him. I liked the actor. I felt like this was, like, pretty true. I, I like that they uh, went all in on the personality. Um, of that yes. like kind of slow kind of like very you know mm-hmm. very g- deliberate in the elocution mm-hmm. and in the things he says and all that and I was like oh I felt like they really kind of mm-hmm. went for it there even though that could be considered like a little cartoonish mm-hmm. um, but he really mm-hmm. went for it and I, I kind of enjoyed every time he was on screen yeah I didn't but I hear you. Mm-hmm. So for me, I, I like their choice, the rationale. Um, I think part of it is, again, because of the story and things that they they did. So, like, they wanted to include him saying, well, I'm going to, tr- oh, oh, wait, just in terms of the acting and the way it was done. I loved his voice. I thought his mm-hmm. voice was great. Um, I love that he, I, they went to me at sort of a different tack, actually, than the book where he kind of, ignores what Rand says and is like, oh, an Aeol that refuses to believe he's an Aeol. That is curious. Um, so so that I enjoyed um, as like its own thing, um, but that didn't feel like Ogier to me so much. Um, I really was hoping for a much slower speaking for him, for it to be drawn out, for him to be interested in the histories that of the world and be going so, off on other subjects. That would have been so slow. He talks slow, yeah, dude. You wanted him no, to talk he, slow. Like, he felt like he was light speed for me. I would, just, I, I would be like this. Like, oh. I... <laughs> you humans are very excitable. <laughs> you can't. No, but that's, I don't, that's, that's the, wild. But that's the feel you want to create. You want you want to get that. No, feel, no, no, no. Uh, that's imitative so, fallacy. I think. Like, no. if he was actually annoying, I would not be happy. Well, that's why you have Rand cut him. That's why you have Rand cut him off, right? Because Rand feels the same thing you are, and then you cut him off. But that's <sighs> the idea. Because he's so long lived, he can take his time. As he's going through and slowly talking and okay. explaining things, even slower hear, than that, probably. I want to hear so, down below in the comments. Do you all yeah. think he needed to talk okay. slower? We need to learn how to do polls or something because yeah, dude Seriously. talks slow to me. I was like, okay, any slower yeah. than this. And I don't think uh, I would have been able to stand it. They felt like to me like they were pacing that scene really fast. Uh, Again, I do want to say, and this is what I was starting to get to, my uh, thoughts on it were tinged with frustration of the way they're continuing to try to do like a mishmash of book in this without sort of respect to the actual history of the world. Uh, They really wanted him to talk about how uh, he had been chased through Tarvalon because in the town they actually meet him, he is chased, but that would never happen in Tarvalon mm. <laughs> because Tarvalon is a place that was built like completely by Ogier. They're like known. Sure, they haven't been there in a while, but no one would be chasing him in Tarvalon. Mm. So like that was really annoying to me. So I was like coming off that annoyance. Um, so I'm sure that had an impact mm. on mine, but I'll still definitely stick to my guns uh, that to me, just the way they did him didn't feel right. I, I enjoy his voice. I'm eager to see what the actor continues to do with it for sure. Um, I have, I think they chose well. Um, I do think that was more a writing or directing thing uh, than the actor thing. And his voice is perfection. I loved mm. it. I loved it. Yeah. Um, I, I would say he's like maybe the only thing 
I enjoyed in this episode was <laughs> was him. Um, I yeah. thought he was good. Yeah, I liked him. But yeah, I no, wasn't I'm thinking eager, about... I'm eager to see more of him. I, I will... Usually, Jeff, I'm kind of down on you nitpicking, but actually that mm. nitpick about uh, Tarvalon, I, I'm on board with this nitpick. Like, I'm like, oh. yeah. Well, because they kind of make a big <laughs> deal I, also in the opening. I think yeah. one of the other parts of the show that has actually looked really good, and I know there have been complaints about mm. parts that look good, parts that look bad, but when they first walk right. through Tarvalon on that ground level, Matt and Rand, mm. like the city looked yeah. good and the things all going on yeah. around them all looked really great. Mm. And you get this idea cool. of very cosmopolitan um, place with lots of different mm. clashing uh, cultures right. and looks and stuff so yes. that does kind of hit me that like they'd be chasing him through i i missed that he said that line the same way yep. as in the original when they were in uh wherever they were yeah especially now that he's not you know 10 feet tall or right, whatever. Right, like right. it makes it more ridiculous yeah because you know? so, they're like oh that just uh, yeah. unfortunate birth defect you know <laughs> like, right? like that's he'd be fine he's just up. a dude yeah <laughs> He just looks like a dude, basically. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, the only other one thing with that uh, is that I was annoyed when he just like suddenly brought Nynaeve to Ran without them actually having that conversation. Um, and he just like fixes it in that moment. Don't get wrong, was happy to see him again, as you were. Um, but And I get that it's like the pacing, the shorting, but to me, that's just not ideal writing. Like, yeah, I realize they don't have a lot of time, um, but you know, you make sacrifices, you make changes. I think there's some cuts we could have made from the Steppen arc <laughs> to, to allow for that meeting to make a little bit more sense. But that's so the last, that's what, the what did you want that you wanted a, a more of a scene between, um, something between Lowell and Nynaeve. Yeah. Uh, I, I wanted either ran to talk to Lowell about it. And we get the hint that maybe Lowell might do something or Lowell to find uh, Nynaeve in the garden for us to get to see her meeting in Ogier. Yeah, just either, either of those, something, just to like, as those do, boom, suddenly she's here. And yay, it, it felt like that part was paced crazy fast and the other arc was so slow. So. All right. Um, so what's this? You wanted to bring up Egg again in this. Oh, yeah, I did just real quick. This to me again is why I say that the, the writing in this episode overall felt weaker to me. And, and bordered on cheesy uh, when they were getting into like, uh, they were bringing back the story of Nynaeve and like the break back fever and all that, which is cool and I like, but just this whole like Egwene is unbreakable as they're like cutting back and forth between her. Um, I thought Egwene as the actress did a really good job acting like a badass when he was like threatening her and stuff. I, I need a, this is one I need to go back and listen to, but I swear her accent almost changed when she was like going in on him, but she was doing such a good job with the performance. I was like, you got me. Uh, even though she sounded sort of different, but it just, the, the back and forth of like a Gwen is unbreakable. And then this, it was just, it was too on the nose for me. Kind of like the ax line again, uh, probably to many people, just a nitpick thing, but I, but I'd be curious. Did, did it seem like too much? To some people like they were hyping Egwene up before that moment that's all all right all right so are we on to step in yeah let's uh let's hit the meat dude i want to know here's what i want to know from y'all in the comments mm -hmm. do you care about step in and i realized that they oh, think so the writers do the writers definitely thought so and i but where is the where is the support for that? I know, like, it's a it's a sad story. Well, let me kind of put it this way. I don't think just trauma or tragedy on its own is story. And I think there's right. a lot, a lot of uh, books, movies, other things. Uh, people disagree with me about this. And please uh. calm down and disagree with me. But, like, just, just, just it's story witnessing. Moment. It's a story moment. Yeah, yeah, and maybe, but like it there's there's not really drama to it. It's like you just witness trauma or you just witness a depression and it's not between characters. It's not conflict. It's not something happening between two characters. It can be you can use it to inform drama that's happening between right. characters. Mm -hmm. But just it alone I don't find super compelling, right? And mm -hmm. I know, like, people are, like, we're really sad about this. I've seen reactions of people kind of talking mm -hmm. about how, how this was, like, so sad. 
And maybe I'm just a sociopath because I felt nothing <laughs> during this part. I'm thinking, why um, am I spending so much time with this dude who, like, yeah. is not important to the story? I'm sorry. He's not at all important to the story. He doesn't have anything to do with the main characters, anything to do with the plot that's supposed to be happening. It's like literally you're going, we're going to take a time out. We've only got eight episodes of this. We're going to take a time no. out of like three quarters of this episode to hang yeah, out. Most of the episode. Most of the episode yeah. to hang out with this dude who is un until an episode ago was completely peripheral it wasn't even really maybe in it at all before the episode before yeah. and it's like this bottle plot this like bottle story that we're gonna like okay do yeah. two and done for what i i feel like i need to be given a reason to care about him yeah. And maybe that's demanding too much. Maybe just my inner humanity should be like, oh, mm -hmm. I care that this guy's going through it. I, I right. should care. But I don't think that's how stories work. I think that's how the real world, mm -hmm. real world works. Sure. And if I had heard about this or I knew this guy, I would be very emotionally mm -hmm. affected by it. But I don't think story works that way. I think you got to work a little bit harder to mm -hmm. get people invested in the character and then mm -hmm. when something like this happens to the character, you're going to be very invested. And there's mm -hmm. just no way for something to really have happened because he's not integral. And, and I just didn't know why I was watching all this about him. And I was just mm -hmm. so bored. So bored. Yeah. This, this episode was shocking to me, uh, honestly, in the complete opposite way of the last episode. It, it felt to me like they kind of blew their climax in the last episode mm -hmm. and then we're just sort of spinning our wheels in this one it was shocking to me that they would spend so long on this particular thing i feel like maybe the writers who came in for this part were maybe people who've written episodic things before like i was just watching some like castle with uh my wife last night, we were like going back and rewatching some. It's just a you know, fun, relaxing show. Um, well, I say fun, relaxing about murders. But the point is, it's a very episodic show where, you know, each show you learn about, you know, here's some new death and here's the new killer. And you learn about someone, you feel for them in that episode, and then they're here and gone. Right? And okay, yeah, episodic can work if we know that that's a sort of narrative journey that we're on. Like we're going to meet someone, care about them within, as you say, a bottle episode, like bottled within these two, as you brought up. But that's not what this is. I, this, this is an epic, huge story. We got a lot of ground to cover. As you said, there's only eight episodes and you just spent most of one of them on a side thing? Like, if there are, <laughs> you know, the, the one-star people out there, right? If there are the people or even anybody that's had trouble with this show, I feel like this is where they're going to lose it. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, there's definitely been plenty of other reasons to complain about changes and stuff like that. But this to me is the epitome of doing something different as opposed to doing what the book is doing for no apparent reason. Like, you know, <laughs> like this, it's not like you're replacing uh, parents trauma to, or parents beginning to give him greater trauma. Like, what does this serve? Just as you're saying. So, yeah. Like, I'm expecting huge backlash about this episode um, from the people who have been critical um, wow. because it exemplifies the thing that many people are complaining about with this. Yeah, show. but I don't like that because what they're going to complain about is this never happened in the books, which is not my complaint sure. even in the slightest. No, no, I, Again, like when we, I, I know, I know, I know. When we talk about that, I feel like it... It creates this dynamic out there where we don't talk about what's important, right? We oh, like no, no. I want to talk, talk about... about the writing decision. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like this on its own merits. Completely. And, and so, like, but but can I say I'm one doing more this thing? as a setup. Yeah. Let me say one well, more I, thing I, before you get yeah, into that. Do it. I understand ahead, having a down episode after a big episode because you talked about the sure. climax thing, and I understand then having Absolutely. kind of like a catch your breath episode yeah. before something else. But mm -hmm. I think even mm -hmm. in those like castle episodes or things like that. You know, just showing, oh, look at this, isn't it sad? 
It's right. the simplicity of that. It's just the basicness of that that like makes yeah. it hard. Actually, ironically, makes it hard for you to connect emotionally. If there was something new mm. to say about this or something that, you know, I had never mm. thought of before or yeah. something where like that drives this character to make a decision mm. that affects others besides just himself or, or make a decision right. that really throws a big obstacle mm -hmm. in the way of our main characters or something suddenly now right. oh okay i'm into it right. you, you've made it compelling yes. it's it, it connects to the story but just to have it be its own little thing and say mm -hmm. look at this everybody isn't this sad my reaction mm -hmm. is no it's not <laughs> or at least it was not right. for me at all sure sure so uh, one of the reasons that I was talking about that sort of like setup and reaction is one, I, I do like predicting reactions, but two, I, I was bringing that up to show the negative to say for me, something I talked about before, which is if you replace something, if you do it well or do it in a compelling way, um, I'll be into it. So for me, I really like Stefan as an actor. I think he's killing it. Mm -hmm. And also just as a super quick aside, I'll be super quick. I didn't mean to make it sound before like I'm some elite acting jackass and like only I can determine if, if there's good actor or not. I'm just saying like once Own you, it, Jeff. Own no, it. You no, are the god you of acting. Study, no, 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 not at all. <laughs> once you study something more, I feel like you become more particular. Just mm -hmm. like if you were a chef, that then you become more particular about ingredients and knowing what's in things and you then, you know, you're not discerning necessarily in a good way. It's just you as an individual become a pickier person as what you like. Sure. So that's... All, all I was trying to point out. Obviously, anyone could have any reactions they want. Yeah, to that. let me just defend Please you. Keep saying. Let me defend <laughs> let me you there. Defend you. Let me defend you there yeah. too, because like we've talked about it before. Like me with my yeah. eyes forgetting whatever in the book, where like I would nitpick mm. the little sentences that that sure. I disliked. Exactly. So, it, and it's an interesting discussion. Like there is obviously expertise exists, and it makes you look at things differently. Yeah. On the other hand. Right, that can be taken too far and then can Absolutely. come off as condescending. And we definitely yeah. you know, don't mean to do that. Yeah, that's that's on the goal. So I always want to keep hearing from people, you know, what actors, just to say with the acting, what actors did you like? What actors didn't you like? So then I can go back and look at moments of performances and see if maybe I had already painted them with a brushstroke of, I don't like this person mm -hmm. and where are, they, where are they now? And maybe I yeah. missed something that could have resonated with me because I, I want to resonate with all of them, right? Like we all want to be enjoying this. Um, I expect, right? So anyway, please to argue this, with I want to point out. Please argue with us yeah. and subscribe. Yeah, argue with us please all argue and subscribe. We, <laughs> Argue and subscribe, I think, as, is the new as you're motto arguing, that we should say. Yeah. So, um, so, I mean, this is verse, right? This is, it's supposed to be us arguing. Um, so, I was sold for most of this. Well, I'm not even going to say most. I was sold for some of this. So, I really like this actor who is playing stuff, and I just don't even know his name. But I feel like he is doing a great job with it. And so, for a lot of his scenes, I did feel it. Um, mm. I enjoyed his story about how he met... Uh, the eyes today and everything like it's not that this is nothing from book one nothing from book one at all but I still enjoyed it like I, I liked it because I felt he carried it and when he started I was like ah oh, this is going to be some like crappy monologue and by the end I was like I feel you dude I feel you so like he had me for a bit but then they kept going back to it I was like I thought it was over like I thought mm -hmm. he was walking up to the tower drops the ring which I thought visually looked really cool drops the ring it becomes like the gold right I thought he was jumping Right, I thought oh. he jumped. I thought Lan went back, touched uh, Moraine because he had died. Right, oh. I thought it was like you know he's gone. He couldn't, he couldn't live with oh, that. Right? right, and so I thought it was done. And and up until that point, I thought you know that was good, especially if it you know does something uh, for Moraine and Lan and something else, or maybe Nynaeve's affected by the warder dying. Something, right? Um, but they didn't they kept going and i was like okay then you know he goes to see Nynaeve and i'm like is this gonna be like an alternate love interest right um and, and then like maybe there's gonna be a competition for Nynaeve's affection right no i like how you keep either. looking for a story right? reason for right. any of this exactly. to happen exactly <laughs> i'm like there's gotta, there's gotta be... then okay so then they really had me when he's got the little statues of the the mm, forsaken right i was like you know me and Forsaken. Right. I, this is why I keep telling you like the later books are great because you get like their viewpoints and everything. Um, so oh, that's a spoiler, but whatever. It's it's so amazing. Anyone who heard that would just probably just get excited to keep going further. But the point is here, I liked this idea of 
you know, showing them almost as sins and praying for the opposite. So like you sort of not are praying to the father of lies, but you're thinking about the father of lies to find the truth. And I was like, that's kind of awesome. Like in terms of like a world building thing, like again, not really in the book, but I was like, that's cool. Um, so I, I was geeking out about that a little bit. I mean, still, I'm sure annoying for a lot of people because it's like, there's so many other things you could be talking about. But for me, at least I was like, that's neat. So then I thought, wait a second. What if this dude is really like a dark friend? Like, what if he's really on the other side, right? And then like, what if, you know, he locked Lan out so then he could go, I don't know, kill somebody. Now, is that really supported? Who would he kill? I don't know. But I was like, oh, so there's uh, been like a reason for this thing, something. Um, but then, no, he just killed himself. So I'm like, you just took the thing that he could have done on the top of the tower top and just did another like half of the, oh, no, like 20 minutes or whatever mm. of the episode for the same end result that doesn't do anything except, again, be sad, as you're saying, and then we see Lan sad, which, oh my goodness, <laughs> like I'm saying, it is so hard for me to judge that actor because they have just taken him so far away from like the Lan character to me. Um, I will say, I thought his performance was exceptional during a part of that grieving scene. And I like the idea of the, the beating fist and everything to sort of pound the grief out of you. Mm -hmm. But then as I feel like I've seen them do in the show a couple of times that they just, they took it too far. Like they took it to that last one. It was too much. Like why did Moraine wait to start beating or why were some people waiting to beat their heart? And again, what did it all serve? Like mm -hmm. it served to show us that Lan is emotional, which is the exact opposite of the book. And then done. Like it just is bizarre to me. So, yeah. there's my play-by-play -play rundown. Right on, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't yeah. have much more to say about it. I, I mean, like, I don't... So weird. I feel like this is so a... So weird. But, I, I, but not weird in that I feel like this is a, a pattern in a lot of things. And it's mm. actually something, you know, again, going back to expertise, I don't want to, like... Uh, <laughs> you know, bring up, oh, a grad school. But I remember one thing that they were talking about talk was like, yeah. yeah, drama is between characters. So a problem mm. with having this trauma backstory and pretty much like in mm. grad school, if you're in like a writing program in grad school, everybody's going to bring their trauma backstory short story. Like it's just like endemic. Right. It's everywhere. Every, that's what everybody's mm. writing. And it, two problems with it. it ends up being like you spend a lot of time on backstory because the trauma always happened like i don't know when you were a kid or, or something like that and then right it's just all about the person sitting there thinking about their trauma yeah and it and it's not interesting it like it doesn't yeah. it, it, and and it's and you feel bad saying it because like especially if somebody's writing well, in some way about their own trauma, they're gonna take it really yeah. badly when you go, oh, your trauma is not interesting. It doesn't mean it's not valuable or it doesn't mean that it's not significant to you. Right. But when you're doing this medium of communication, just it's just simply not a story. And so you yeah, it's not a story. Yeah, you shouldn't be mad like when somebody is not as compelled by it because what's mm -hmm. compelling is characters interacting. What, what are like kind of brains are really our social brains right. are interested in yeah. is people interacting with each other and like the, mm -hmm. the sort of foibles betrayals, mm -hmm. you know, I mean all mm -hmm. the other things that can happen in these inner human interactions. So a very solipsistic, right. like it's just about me and my trauma sort of thing it doesn't really always come across and it, and it doesn't mm. really compel people. Now, if somebody had that same experience, I found they will be super compelled by it. Right. A mm. lot of times. And I don't want to minimize that for yeah, those no. people, you know, no. like, and I, I've already seen videos where people said like, Oh, I had a similar experience with a suicide. Mm. And so I was really touched right. and, and that's, I'm not minimizing that, but no. it I don't think for, just audience as a whole or yeah. like or fos posterity it you've created mm -hmm. something really interesting there 
Right. I, I think it's because, uh, you know, we hear with writing or storytelling, you know, man versus nature, man versus man, man versus self. Right. Mm. Um, and there can also be like man versus society. And, and when I say man, ubiquitous, obviously, you know, the, the idea is like person versus these various things. And the fascinating thing is if you do person versus nature, in a lot of cases, nature is going to be humanized to some degree. It'll be like versus like King Kong or Godzilla. But then we get, you know, things that where they seem like they have that they're a person in their own right to a degree. Um, or if it is just a force of nature, like if it's chasing tornadoes, right, like Twister, it's still about the people and their interactions as they chase, not a solitary individual. The one movie that came to mind that's just like a person versus nature would be uh, Tom Hanks, right? But even then, he makes Wilson, you know what I mean? So we're yeah. getting some interaction with something, right? Um, to have a story that's just person versus themselves, and they, I don't want to say lose, because I, I don't want to equate here like suicide with losing or something mm. like that. But the idea is that, that the struggle that he was facing internally, maybe if he had been a character from the start, right? Like if this was Matt's inner turmoil about maybe killing some of the family, which we saw, sure, because that's then going to drive later things that happen with Matt, or if mm. he died, his friends, right? But we are the only person that seems to really be having an impact on is Lan. Um, and yeah, I mean, the story is a about him but not this first part as much so uh, that's what seems so strange about this so i think people get can get caught up in this person versus self and like yeah you can have that but that by itself is very hard to do i think as you're talking about as a compelling story and i also feel like, like it's just so, that yeah i agree yeah. and i also feel like it's like mm -hmm. so kind of crappy in a way just to do it mm. in a character you know is minor that the writers right. are like okay we can yeah. do this suicide story on this character it feels like a cop out mm. even of the suicide story because because it's not we a know this yeah. guy's a, a what were they on star mm -hmm. trek the white the red shirts or whatever like oh, this guy shirts. is like a guy yeah who yeah. ultimately doesn't matter guy. he's a one and done yeah. and it actually mm. then minimizes that trauma or that issue so uh, I, I this is the episode yeah. where the first episode where i felt mm. like really down on the show like other episodes i've been like yeah. okay i understand criticisms i see where right. you know some of the critics are coming from but this one and i and this might be where i'm different from than most mm. other people like i just mm. really dislike this but you know, maybe mm -hmm. a lot of people and, you know, please disagree and subscribe. Yeah, uh, tell maybe. us down below how you felt about that, that plot line. Right. I think what happens is that people can say, oh, it was just one episode. The it'll story will pick back up. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and so they can be okay with that. Um, so I, I, I do get that sort of response, like, you know, calm down, guys. It's just one episode, right? Um, but I think what we're also considering is there's only eight episodes, you know? Like, that was just a lot of time. Like, I, I can't even imagine that, like, pitch meeting to, like, whoever wrote this coming to be like, okay, I say we spend a whole episode on Steppen. Who? Like, this guy we met before, a whole episode about, like, his trauma. Wait, who again are we writing this whole episode about? Like, this is the balls to, to, to say, like, we're just, as you mentioned, a red shirt. We're going to spend a whole episode on them. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why, like, that's what I mean, just a wild choice. Um, I did just want to quickly point out, I think uh, a show that recently did a good job of uh, person versus self is Arcane uh, with the way they handled uh, Jinx and a lot of uh, Jinx's trauma. <laughs> I um, disagree. Was interesting. We'll have to have so, another discussion, yeah, Jeff, because we, I, I think, think it should. falls into a I lot of the should. same issues. Um, oh, but, I think... Uh, we'll have to mm, talk about mm, it. I, I think we should. I think we should. Yeah. I, I think they at least attacked in a much more creative way. Well, I, way I, I like but that anyway. better, but I still am yeah. not super in love. So, well, and the reason I bring it up is she is a main character, right? Mm, and and mm. her, and, the, what she goes through affects other people. So, yeah, affects her sister, you know, so mm -hmm. I, I get yeah. that there is more, right. there was more possibility there in, in that one, yeah. which I I haven't mm -hmm. finished. I'll, I'll finish the next few episodes, but uh, yeah, I think when we're we, just going to have to finish do it. I mean, we'll talk about it. With Arcane standing out as like the way it's been for so many people looking at it is like this new, like, oh, look at this writing. I think we can't talk about writing and not talk about it. So mm -hmm. anyway, to come, but it, it does relate to what we're saying here. Final thing, real quick. Because I feel people are going to be like, Jeff, how did this not get brought up? We're at Tarvalon, right? Mm -hmm. 
what is happening? Okay, in terms of where this story is going, um, are they already into book two? Are they just going to completely skip uh, the end of of book one? I feel like people they who would defend this episode, I, I think they're completely skipping. I think the people that would defend this episode are like dudes. End of the first book is blah. So they were like, you know what? We need something else instead. Step an arc, okay? And listen, I can get behind the end of book one is weak, 100%. But I think there's plenty of other things you could have done instead of this arc, which doesn't really tie to anything. Um, so wh where is this gonna go? I mean, there's things, while the end of book one is weak, things happen in it that are very important for later. Now, I suppose they could just work those things in, but... It feels like this episode derailed the main plot so much. It's quite a while to think like what's going to happen next. Because the trajectory was we need to get these kids, one of which can be the Dragon Reborn, to Tarvalon. It's episode five. We're already there. We're right. already at Tarvalon. Now, sure, we've got the kids in like an inn, which, by the way, I have not met a single innkeeper since I left the two rivers. Ridiculous. Where's I Thomas? I was. Dude, I can't do when they didn't meet the innkeeper. I was like, "What?" I was like, <laughs> "You remember when I was doing like Laptop I freaked out?" Thrown. I, I was like, "What?" Like, I freaked out that we didn't see an innkeeper. Not one of them. So, yeah, just Tom, Tom's friend, you know. So, anyway, the point is like they're already there. Where is this story going? Like, what? What's gonna be? the alternate climax of this episode. They already gentled Loghain, which we said was like crazy that they already did that. So, uh, uh, you know. Yeah. We... Related to so... that, related to that, I, I'm starting to feel the kind of same mm -hmm. sort of way I did feel at the end of book one or, or maybe mm -hmm. before the big turn in the plot of book one where I'm okay. like, I'm not okay. clear on the stakes here. And... Right. And, like, especially with this whole boosting the mystery, I think you also have to boost the stakes on that mystery if you want yes. me to care about the mystery. Because now I'm, like, really, I don't care who the... Because, like, all we said is vaguely they could heal the world or break the world. All yeah. right, whatever that means. And I have, like, yeah. no buy-in to this mystery. I'm, like, I really don't yeah. care which one it is. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Well, because we're not really seeing what they're going to do or, or the consequences of it being someone it shouldn't, you know? But right. anyway. And we haven't Pardon even me, really ahead. been told, and I felt like this way in the book as well, but even more, mm -hmm. at least a little bit more so in the book, I feel like, okay, dark one i should be scared of or worried about we have no yeah. dark one we have a weird cgi fire eyes yeah. guy that we've seen for two seconds in There's two no previous episodes no talking at all whereas like they've had at least conversations with the dude yeah. in the book and so like there's no there's no villain besides no. the white cloak guy in right in the whole thing so like I did feel that fatigue here where I'm like, I don't care who the dragon is. I don't know. I don't have any set parameters on where this is going. So I don't know why I care about still watching if I don't have this thing yep. that is mm -hmm. driving the narrative. And especially when yeah. you take a big time out, if you take a big time out and you don't have this thing in the background, like maybe if you have this thing running in the background, we're like, we gotta sure. get here. Here's our clock. Yep. Here's the consequences. Right. Here's what goes down if we fail. Yeah. If all of that's right. in the background, then maybe you can hang out and talk about yeah. Stephen's sadness for an entire episode. But without, like, without yeah. that, yeah. it's like really tough. So this is where, and it feels so crazy to say, because I would happily argue, well, not happily, but I would argue, despite my great love of The Wheel of Time, the plotting in book one is weak, right? Like it's just this journey, 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 journey to a location. But at least we know where we're going, right? Like, I, I felt so disassociated. Like, sure, it takes so long to get there in the book. But here I'm like, where are we even going? Like, we're, we're already mm -hmm. there. So, yeah, I feel like we've completely lost the momentum. There is no villain that's getting referenced more. Like, that's, again, why I thought having maybe Stepin be a dark friend would, like, bring the uh, sort mm -hmm. of, you know, bad 
uh, elements back. Because, you know, we, right. we had so much more of a, a drive, as you brought up, in the previous episodes where, you know, you've got at least some dreams, you've got them being chased by the Fade, you've got, you know, uh, the Dark Friend in, in the one village. And sure, people could say, well, you know, I mean, that was just last episode that we also had, you know, them being attacked and Loghain and all that. True, but like, it's the one of the big narrative drives is we've got to get these kids to a place of safety before the bad guys get them. And we're just like, not getting that. And we're also not getting like, what happens when we get there or what happens when we know who one of them is. And the plotting they did for Nynaeve is just so weird for me about her being like trapped in a room, but not really. And then they're only being like, no, there's nobody in the halls. This is what I mean about this episode made the world feel small to me. I felt like they only had a cast of like 10 people for, for the White Tower and they only used like two of them. Like the opening shots of Tarvalon was awesome, but I also really wanted some of the descriptions like in the book where like you've got cra buildings that are crashing waves or like fish, like it's supposed to be gorgeous and it wasn't that. But even more than that, like the White Tower just felt empty like there was almost no warders around like there would have been warders around when Stepan goes to kill himself like mm. it's just it just was so empty mm. uh, and it was like the only factions were Moraine and Leandrin uh, and, and like sort of vying to have her pick but not really Moraine sort of seems to care and again you've taken away Moraine's agency by having her being like we lost them you know which I like that we lost the moment previously, but now it's like, she's like, we'll find them in Tarvalon or we won't. Like, there's no, I sense no urgency from her yeah. to find the boys. Right, like, she's right. like, I'll let you know. It's cool. And then she's just going to like hang it around. Like, that is not the way the book is all. Like, she is, you know, like a tracking hound. Yeah. The moment she doesn't know where they are. So Yeah, there's no clock I, on this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you feel it. Yeah. I just, it's so weird to me to say that there was more narrative push in the book. Believe me, it is weir really <laughs> weird for me to say that. Really weird for me to say that, but somehow, somehow it has happened. Somehow. Okay, that's, that's all I got. I'm spent. All right, everybody. Well, we will be <laughs> back here next episode. We'll see. Maybe they'll put the clock on. Maybe they'll... They'll turn around Maybe. for least for us. Let us know what mm -hmm. you think. Are we crazy? Are we nitpicky? Were yes. you brought to tears by this episode? Probably. Let us know, mm. and uh, we will see you in the next one. We'll see you then.